Oh my sets, what are you doing? I did trade sets about a year back when there was anticipation of borders reopening but I do not hold sets right now. I'm looking elsewhere. So it's really none of my business in a lot of ways. But I realized something. I've been mentioning favorable about sets, especially when comparing sets and SIA. Sets is a service-based business. Seem easy for me to understand and it's even a case study that I use when I teach my course on investing. But today I'll be sharing with you why I probably won't be touching sets for quite a long while, at least until this whole thing resolves. But everything I mentioned today is definitely my own personal opinion. It's not financial advice, especially if you own sets already or if you're thinking of it. Let's keep it as a good discussion point. If you're keen for it, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'll break down this whole discussion into three key parts. The first, I'll be sharing with you what I understand from WFS. WFS is the acquisition target, Worldwide Flight Services. The second part is my opinion on this acquisition. Of course, I'll back my opinion up with some analyst's opinion so that there are more useful pointers for you to consider. And last but not least, I'll be touching on the risk, the risk of this big acquisition. So let's start with what I see in WFS. First, I'm not in the industry, so I don't really know how they stand out against their competitors that much. For one, they seem to be handling cargo on behalf of flights. So if you can see from this, they have taken contracts from Nippon Airways and Newville Air. So it's not really the same as, for example, DHL. So it's really a flight handling B2B service. Ever since the year 2000, they have been acquiring and merging smaller agencies. And if this chart is aiming to scale, their closest competitor could be Swissport. Sets, of course, sits as a niche player at the top right-hand corner. But SETS has a lot of other arms of businesses. SETS, for example, does food solutions. SETS also manages the cruise terminal. And this chart over here shows clearly the breakdown for SETS. In my opinion, SETS has been moving away from aviation for quite a long while, investing more in the food solutions and the cruise services which is not linked to aviation. So this whole acquisition is a big reversal of direction. And from my preliminary search, it feels to me that WFS has been building market share by acquiring smaller competitors through debt acquisition. Before the private equity firm Cerberus, who is selling to SETS, Platinum Equity actually owned them. So they are also a private equity firm looking to buy businesses, make them bigger and stronger, and then sell them off for profit. So in my opinion, these private equity firms have been using debt, and perhaps they are seeing some headwinds. That's why they are looking to make this sale. Which leads to the question, is this acquisition cheap or not? Now in this second section, let's address that. But before we get that, help me smash the like button because it's taken a few hours to prepare this and hopefully it will give you some food for thought. Let's look back again at the article that I just shared with you. Platinum Equity actually sold to Cerberus at 1.2 billion euros. This was back in August 2018. There was no mention of debt back then and they themselves had only bought WFS in 2015. Cerberus right now is selling to sets at 1.19 billion euros in equity. And not just that, they have also loaded on the company with about 1 billion of debt. So Cerberus has not actually made money on their equity investment. They bought at 1.2 billion and now they're selling at 1.19 billion. And take note again, euros have become weaker. Euros previously in 2018 was about 1.5 plus, but right now it's again sing dollar at only 1.4. So this exit on paper looks to me like a loss. So what's the catch? Is it that they find that the company can grow bigger already or they have to service some of these loans which is going to be increasingly a big problem? This analyst summary has mentioned that SETS will acquire 100% of WFS for equity consideration of 1.187 billion euros when with about 1 billion of debt added on, the enterprise value that SETS is buying is at 2.25 billion euros, which is 3.1 billion Sing dollars. And with announcement of that, you see the share price of SETS has fallen tremendously over the last few days, correct? SETS previously was hovering close to $4, right now it's at $3. And the market cap for SETS right now is only at $3.36 billion. So it's pretty much a big fish eat big fish situation. They are not buying small companies. So this is a big M&A that is almost as big as it if we look in terms of the enterprise value model. Stay tuned to the end because I'll be showing you some examples of other companies who have acquired companies around their own size. 
With that, I'd like to introduce you to today's proud sponsor who is Weibo. Everything mentioned over here is my personal view and should not be construed as financial advice. And with that out of the way, let me show you what's inside my own Weibo account. By the way, if you're new to Weibo, you can actually get freebies right now. For new signups, there's actually $130 worth of Tesla shares. And this promotion is going to end soon. So this is a quick glimpse into my own Weibo account. So far, it's been good. I've been using it to make small trading positions. And you can actually see your history in a glimpse. The user interface is really easy to use. And right now, they have $0 in commission fees. So if you're new, check out links below to get your freebies with a new sign up today. So in terms of this valuation, this code over here mentions something interesting. In terms of the enterprise value over EBITDA multiple, it is at 9.7 times pre-Synergy because Synergy is what Sets is mentioning, correct? We can integrate our businesses, uh, but every acquisition I see also mentioned about Synergies. They go on to mention that it's slightly lower than the 10.2 to 10.7 times peer transaction multiple. Now when I see that, I'm going to look at the presentation. Right now, the EBITDA for WFS seems to be at an all-time high. They've managed to jump almost five-fold, correct, from 2020 to 2021, the right-hand side EBITDA chart. What is this related to? I also cannot explain. But if we're using EV over EBITDA of 9.7 times when the denominator is inflated, definitely appears to be cheap. If we use an average of 5 years, aha, uh -huh, then maybe that multiple isn't that favorable after all. So are there other ways to look at this? I found something by UOB Kahian. They've mentioned that the deal does not appear to be cheap at first look and it translates to about 1.88 times WFS's sales. And compared to when they first bought the firm, the EV over sales was 1.0 times back in 2018. So a different matrix of looking in terms of sales versus enterprise value also shows that this deal is hard to classify as cheap. Not just that, it's mentioned that the EBITDA margin for WFS is lower than SETS at about 11.4%. And this means that with this integration, the profit margin overall for SETS as a group would definitely be lower. The interesting part I'd like to highlight to you next is the analyst has mentioned that it depends on SETS's judgment and justification for potential synergy, but they are also concerned that the low-hanging fruits of growth opportunities were already seized by the three PE firms that used to own it. Could that mean that growth is not likely to be that easy? And take note again, in terms of revenue compounded and a growth rate, it's only at 6%. And speaking to here, everything I suggested really suggests that I'm not so in love with this idea at all. Why must sets do such a mega deal? Is it definitely beneficial for shareholders? Because if we see in terms of the overall aviation trend, we can see that FedEx has actually mentioned something very recently, just a few weeks ago, that their total revenues will be dropping massively. And this is due to possible global recession, slowing down global trades and air trades. So if FedEx as a bellwether is showing signs of slower growth or even negative growth, I do believe that everybody in aviation would see a hit moving forward in 2023. So if you are a sad shareholder, I apologize first, I don't have much positive that I'd like to share with you and I even have more negative stuff. Let me show you some risk from previous acquisitions as well as how markets have reacted to them. The most recent one is quite obviously MCT and MNACT. Maple Tree Commercial Trust merger with its sister Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust to form Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust. This actually took place in December 2021 and what we saw is that share prices plunged by 8.78% just that very week when it was announced. The merger offering also had a blessing of the sponsor and they had to adjust certain terms and conditions because markets obviously did not like the two of them merging together. I have also another example. Many years ago, I remember this case of Del Monte Pacific Limited. Right now, it's just a small cap company. But they've actually done a big acquisition back in 2013. And that acquisition was also debt funded and almost an equivalent size one. Markets reacted adversely from that whole acquisition, plunging 32% from October all the way to December. Now the problem with that acquisition as of right now is interest rates are going up, correct? If you had done acquisitions back in 2016, 2017, 2018, no problem because interest rates are 1-2% thereabouts. But right now, we're facing 3-4% or even higher interest rates for corporates. So to make profits using that acquisition is increasingly difficult. I have a further example to show you. 
This is a company I'm tracking a bit more, Occidental Petroleum. Warren Buffett has invested in them also. But take note again, three years back in 2019, they've actually did a big acquisition themselves, acquiring Anadaco Petroleum, and that acquisition was $55 billion. That put severe strain on the company's financials, and as you can see, markets reacted badly to that acquisition also. So all in all, in my cautious view of things, acquisitions when done on a big scale usually has a lot of risk. I don't know if this one will turn out well or not. Of course, the intentions are always to grow the business long term, but as a short term basis, it creates unnecessary risks and results. Is there a reason why Tembusu Capital has sold out recently on sets? Tembusu Capital's parent company is actually Tomasic. So to fund this acquisition, sets will need to cough out money, correct? Analysts has mentioned that they may fund it with 300 million of internal cash, and then the rest of $2.8 billion has to be for more equity or debt. This analyst report has suggested about a 792 million equity, which means the rest are all going to be debt. If that is true, that will balloon up SETS's debt to equity ratio to a sky high level, especially when interest rates are now not cheap. Take note again, they've also mentioned that when they want to sell equity, SETS could possibly need a 30% below market price discount to their equity, and that's why investors are running scared. I went to check the books of SETS. They do have 700 plus million dollars in cash, and maybe that's the max they can cough out, which means a bridging loan is definitely necessary. As mentioned, the long-term debt shaded in blue is definitely going to rise if this acquisition goes through. Now, very recently, CEO Kerry Mock has stepped out to say that SETS would likely explore reducing the size of the rights issue, and that's because he respects the view of markets and investors. But I have big questions to that. It sounds nice to want to reduce the equity, which may have to be sold as a cheap, but that only means that you have to use more debt. There's no escaping from it. It's either use debt or use equity. So it's really a rock and a hard place. I don't know how to get out of that. And personally, I'll just continue to stay as an onlooker, learning about businesses. But I guess if I'm keen on the travel industry, I'll probably look more at Gunting. And if I'm looking for a company that's growing, I think this other one might be a bit more interesting. So check it out also because it might be a profitable idea that you can explore. With that, sign up from here and see you there. Take care as always. Goodbye.